Welcome to the Overflow Worship Podcast, where we serve and support leaders so you can serve and support your local church. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Overflow Worship Podcast. I'm your host, Andrea Olson. Well, we are on a Countdown to the Conference series, and you have had the privilege of hearing from a lot of our session speakers and guest artists and worship leaders. And I'm excited to have two more people with me today to give you a little bit of their hearts behind the ministry that they do right now. And then also, we're going to tease out some of the things we're going to be talking about. So I'm so excited to have McKendry Tucker and Chris Clayton with me here today. Thank Thank you so much, both of you, for joining me on the podcast today. Super excited. Thanks for having us. Yeah, it's great to be here. Thank you. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. Well, Chris, why don't you kick it off? Tell everybody just a little bit about you and, uh, you know, where God has you serving in ministry today. So, yeah, currently in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, No plans of leaving anytime soon. I don't know why I said currently, but in Nashville. um, Family, uh, married to Kara be 21 years this coming January, mm-hmm. five kids, um, ages almost 19 down to four. So it wow. is a ruckus of a house <laughs> in our sometimes, but it's an adventure and it's fun. Um, yeah, ministry-wise, uh, been leading worship and producing records, writing songs for the last 20 years. Mm-hmm. And um, started out in Texas. I'm a Texas native, and we moved to Nashville about six years ago. And my heart's just for the church. That's, mm-hmm. that's kind of, that's just... But you know, gets me up in the morning to either write a song or to work with churches or artists like yourself, Andrea, mm-hmm. and um, just love pouring into the local church, whether it's through songwriting or through mentorship or just conferences or whatever it is. And um, that's just kind of what the Lord has given me is uh, as a burden and a passion for people in that area. So, um, yeah, that's just kind of what I do every day. I get up and it's either writing songs or working on records or leading worship. I'm also the worship pastor at my church here in Franklin, Tennessee. If you don't know where Franklin is, it's just south of Nashville, about 30 minutes. And hmm. uh, been here at Gateway Church, Gateway Franklin Church, for about uh, a little over five years now. Wow. So that's kind of my quick synopsis, if you will. That's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. All right, McKendry, you're up. Tell everybody just a little bit about you. Yes, my name is McKendry Tucker. I'm so glad to be a part of this. I'm honored to be a part of this. This is awesome. Um, I am a songwriter, producer, musician as well here in Nashville, Tennessee, uh, except I live a little further south than even Franklin. Uh, I live in Spring Hill. Uh, but um, my wife and I, Rachel Tucker is her name, and uh, we have three beautiful, amazing kids. And uh, we go to the belonging. Uh, church, which is based in Nashville, Tennessee. We've been a part of that for many years, but yeah, um, my my passion desire is along the same lines. I, I love to equip the church with powerful, um, um, truth-driven songs, mm-hmm. but truth-driven songs that are based out of scripture, uh, but also based out of what God is doing in his in his church in his modern church right now and um I love awakening songwriters in the church it, even in the local church I think it's amazing and um so yeah passionate about that I've uh, been blessed to be able to do that uh for the last 10 plus years and um just staying busy <laughs> but blessed and honored yeah yeah That's amazing. Well, and for all of our listeners, what you guys probably don't know is that both Chris and McKendry produced on my last record. And so if you go and listen to it, you get to hear the incredible gifts that God has given both of them and their abilities for production and um, songwriting and uh, arranging and all the things. So um, just God has gifted both of you so much. And, And one of the unique things also is alongside of that it's like you have all of this all of these parts of your ministry where you're you're songwriting and you're pouring into songwriters you're producing all those things but then you're also serving in your local church like Chris you're on staff McKendry you're serving in your local church and uh you know it's it's really amazing that you guys have a beat on what's happening in the church and cuz you know that's who we work with at Overflow Worship is local church worship leaders and and so you have this unique perspective of really understanding both both worlds you know you've done the touring thing and now you do the production songwriting stuff for the church and then you serve in the church and so you have just this really amazing unique perspective and so that's why I wanted to invite you guys to come to the conference this year because you have such amazing hearts for the church and a 
incredible gifting and skill and a level of wisdom to bring to our people. And so I'd love to share with them just a little bit about, you know, what we're going to be, what you guys are going to be talking about at the conference. So Chris, if you want to go, go first and just maybe give people a little teaser of, uh, your session topic and, you know, maybe just why it's a a valuable topic. Like, why did we go down this road? Why did we have you teach on this, on this topic? Yeah, Yeah, for sure. Um, well, I I think we're hitting a couple different things um, Mm on throughout the weekend. And, uh, the first one I'm really excited about, uh, it's kind of more practical nuts and bolts of tools you can put, you can put in your tool belt of, as a worship leader, as as someone who may plays on the team, maybe even someone who works in tech or production. And that's, um, why do, why do we use, um, tracks in, in, in live worship? And, Mm -hmm. um, that's a very popular thing that's been over the last few years. That's kind of come about in, within the church is using, um, stems, tracks, click tracks, things like that, whatever you may call it. And, um, It's kind of, for some, it's a big mystery as to, you know, how does it all work? How does it integrate into my worship team? Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about kind of more the philosophy of why you should, or maybe you shouldn't use tracks. And if you do, um, you know, what are some tools you can use? And so we'll be just talking, kind of breaking down um, the do's and don'ts of tracks um, and the importance of one thing we'll talk about just to get a, a specific tease is um, that tracks are not meant to replace people yeah. uh, on your team and um, why why that's important. And there's a lot of different ways we'll unpack that. And then practically, we'll talk about a tool that I use a lot here at Gateway Franklin um, that's put out by multitracks.com. It's called Playback. And a lot of people use Ableton and Playback. And so um, I, I just have fallen in love with this program. And so we're going to use that as a kind of example of um, just using the simplicity of the program and how you can just use it in, you know, in, in, in on your Sunday mornings or on your Wednesdays or weekends, whenever you use it. So yeah. excited about that. And then we're going to have a session where we kind of, I think it's a round table kind yeah. of panel type thing with McKendry and Andrea and some others that are on that as well, that just kind of talking, um, just nuts and bolts of ministry and how we all integrate from musician side to worship leader side, the production side, and just kind of leave it open-handed, I think, to where, you know, the participants of the conference get to ask some questions and kind of, kind of just pour into that a little bit. So yeah, yeah, I'm so excited about your your track session because we're you're going to equip the the worship leaders and the like kind of from the the platform side of it, and then anybody who comes as a sound tech, we're going to equip the sound techs on how to get them, you know to the sound system, to the board and how to mix them and everything. So we're trying to give you guys a well-rounded package. Um, And then for our, our group session, you know, last year we did a group band session and it was just a resounding favorite. And so I'm excited to bring in other perspectives of, hey, look, from each perspective, from the worship pastor, from the band leader and the keys player and the vocalist, like what are some of the things that we all need to do to work together to go to the next level of, of cohesiveness, you know, it's, yeah, it's skill, but it's even just like understanding each other better. And so that we can play better together. So I'm super excited about, about that. So McKendry, you are going to be teaching a session for our keys players, and I'm super excited about that. Why don't you just give people a little tease about uh, your, your keys session? Yeah, so um, I'm super excited about this. Uh, I'm going to be teaching um, a breakout session on uh, basically everything you need to know about worship keys. Um, mm-hmm. Everything that you, as a as a keys player in the church, what's your role? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, what's your role? Whether it's just piano playing, whether it's a pads keys position. You know, how do you how do you back up a band? How do you play with a band with just playing with keys? That kind of stuff. Um, we're going to cover something that I like to talk about a lot, and that's transitioning mm-hmm. um, between songs a- and even those in-between moments. And if you're a keys player, you definitely have already picked up on the fact that you are one of the players of worship that played the entire time, yeah. pretty much. Um, at least there's the opportunity for that. And um, so I'm going to touch on that and teach about different tips and different um, tricks that I've learned along the way of years of being behind tons of worship leaders and mm-hmm. playing in multiple different churches and um, tricks I've learned um, of how to transition 
maybe properly or to get creative, when to be creative in your transitions, when not to be, you know, all that kinds of stuff. Um, so I'm really excited about that because I'm excited about honing in on the details of that. Mm -hmm. And Chris, I love what you said about tracks um, was not meant to replace people. I think that's yeah. so beautiful. And that's something that I'm going to talk about as well as, you know, the modern church. Um, a lot of churches use at least a click track or tracks. And when do we rely on that? When mm -hmm. do we, you know, when do we learn how to like put our effort in and, know how to play along with tracks when to transition out of tracks when to do all that mm. um so i'm excited about that and uh and yeah andrea last year so i had the honor of being at the conference last year and that breakout session with everybody that was my most favorite session yeah. that was amazing so with you chris that's going to be so awesome to just kind of have this moment where we can all sit there and answer questions, whether we know the answer or not, we yeah. can just dialogue about it. That's the biggest thing. Just talk about yeah. it. Yeah. So I'm stoked about it. Yeah, me too. I think it's so cool that we can all learn together and learn from one another. And I think that's one of the most powerful things about being together in a conference setting like this and in class sizes that, you know, we purposefully try to keep small so that it's not scary to ask that question that you think, oh, I bet nobody else would ever ask this. It's like, yeah. I bet you there's at least one other person thinking the same thing. So ask it. <laughs> um but I'm I'm excited about that group that group session just to bring um, all of our different perspectives together and really try to encourage these these teams because for those of you who are listening who've never been to the conference before this is not just for the worship leader this is for the entire worship team we are wanting to equip your whole team with tools that you can take home and implement right away it's not something that you have to you know try to decode and um, hope that someday you'll figure it out. Like we want to make sure it's applicable and relevant for your context right away. So last question for the two of you, Chris, I'll let you go first. Why should, like you're a worship pastor, so you probably, you know, have a desire to go to worship conferences yourself, or you would love for your team members to go take one in. And why, why is this important? Why should we do it? Yeah. I mean, I've been to a lot of conferences over these years, and um, I think the one thing, it, it, either as a participant or as like I'm doing here where I'm teaching and being a part of it, uh, the team, um, and I think the one common denominator is there is growth in just unity as mm -hmm. a team when yeah. you go to things like this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you just come as a worship pastor, um, you'll get a lot of great things out of it. But to go back home and try to explain that to your team, they're not going to get the full, you know, idea of what all you learned because they weren't there. Yeah. So when you bring your team with you, they get to experience it. Now that may be in different breakouts, different, you know, different scenarios where they're going to learn. But you come together at the end of the conference, even while you're, in, you know, in many, uh, you know, in Minnesota, and you can talk about it and kind of debrief. Then you start seeing growth as a team because you're both experienced it firsthand. Mm -hmm. And so I think the the um, the unity that comes out of conferences together is really really important because then that just translates on on platform. You know, mm -hmm. you're more unified on platform. Um, so I think you know I, I I encourage you know worship pastors that are listening to this like don't just don't just think selfishly you know that you know in in terms of just going, going, coming by yourself like grab grab someone who could really grow as a keys player who could benefit from a Kendry session who could learn from you know the production side of things and being a better sound tech um, it's only going to make you a better team because you guys mm -hmm. experienced it together hmm. wow amen that is so good thank you McKendry. Same question from your experience of years of serving in the local church. Why is this important? Yeah, that's no, that was well put, uh, Chris. That was awesome, and I, I I completely agree with that. And I I feel like in my own personal experience, the moment that I think or maybe hint at the idea of knowing everything I need to know, hmm. that's, that's proof that I, that there's a yeah. lot more to learn. <laughs> and, and like, I feel like for me personally, going to multiple different conferences, just like um, you guys over the last several years, like I've learned so much mainly from that community, mainly from, hmm. you know, learning of, you know, about how different people 
navigate through their church systems or navigate through their teams of worship, you know, navigate how they how they express their their heart of worship in their local church and just learn. I'm just learning hmm. is is everything. So I would encourage everybody who's even considering going to this. Not only are you going to learn so many things, um, so many different skill sets and so many different um tricks and approaches to maybe technically leading worship or running tracks, uh, but you'll also have a great deep sense of community, hmm. as you guys have well put. Like I know last year for me, going to the SIM conference site was so encouraging for me just hmm. to kind of have dialogue about the conversations of these people that hmm. are coming and worshiping and learning more about worship and learning how to how to you know how to bring more of a cultivation of worship into their church, into their local mm. church. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Mm. And, and I'll mm. say this too, like um, to what McKendry was just saying, like I remember my dad growing up said all the time, school is always in session. Mm. Like you're always yeah. learning something. Like yeah. and I guarantee that I'll learn something that weekend, even as mm. a, you know, as on t- part of the, the, the conference team, mm. I'll walk away learning something that weekend from somebody Mm -hmm. and it may not be some, you know, there's always an opportunity to learn both from the platform and just one-on-one someone you'll meet that weekend that will Mm -hmm. be like, Hey, have you ever done it this way? Have you tried something? And the relationship in itself is a win because, you know, you may need to meet another worship pastor who lives, you know, in another part of town, another part of the state, another, another state altogether that you just become great accountability with and Mm -hmm. bounce ideas off. So uh, if anything, the win is just relationships. And I think that's always, uh, that's a strong win. Yeah, absolutely. Amen. That is so good. Yeah, I I just want to always be, I want to be a lifelong learner, you know, because once I get, if I ever get to the point where I'm like, I'm good, then like you said, McKendry, then I know there's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just always want to um, approach life with that that posture. And I agree with you, Chris, every year at the conference, I walk away with way more blessing of the people Mm -hmm. I've encountered, the things that I've learned, the perspective and just the like appreciation for the body of Christ. You know, it's encouraging to hear what's going on in different churches all over the place and that it's like God is doing something new and unique and special in every one of those places at the same time. And I just think that's just incredible. It blows my mind. So um, I'm so excited to have you both up here in October. It feels really far away, but it's not. And I'm not even going to like say how many weeks away it is because it'll stress me out. Um, <laughs> but it's coming fast. And so I'm super excited to have you both and everybody who's listening. I'm sure that after today, you get just a tiny snapshot of the hearts that these two have for the church and for ministry and the Lord. Um And so I hope that you'll join us at the conference. And Chris McKendry, thank you for taking the time today. I so appreciate it. Super honored and cannot wait to be there in October. It's going to be awesome. Yes, absolutely. Can't wait. It's going to be amazing. Thank you so much. All right, everybody, that wraps us up for another episode. And until next time. You've been listening to the Overflow Worship Podcast. If you enjoy our podcast, please take a moment and leave us a five-star rating and a written review, which helps us reach more people. New episodes are released every other Monday. So until next time, thank you for listening.